welcome to Logan Sounds Off, where I talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Wonderful. Congratulations, by the way. Fabulous, fabulous time on KFM. Thanks. Um, would you like to start the interview? I've got my questions yes, please. here ready. Off you go. Um, so hello and welcome to Logan Sounds Off. This is the 20th interview, actually, wow. now. I, I believe so, anyways. And uh, today I've got Aidan Cooney. So how are you, Aidan? I'm wonderful. And this is my very first ever Zoom call. Wow. <laughs> Achievements all around. There we are. You better believe it. So, for those who are living under a rock, uh, Aidan, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I started working in radio when I was 15. Like you, I had a very big interest in it as a young fella. And I got very lucky. I also worked very hard, but I got very lucky. And I worked with some of the very biggest of pirate stations around the time. Radio Dublin, ARD, and then it's the 80s with Sunshine and Radio Nova. And then I got my very first contract full-time with Century Radio. So I had a decision to make then whether or not to leave my pensionable, well-paid job in the civil service and take a chance on being a DJ on the radio. And guess what? I took that chance. <laughs> and I loved it. So I worked with Century for about, ooh, only about nine months. They, they would probably be Today FM now. The original license went to a company called Century Radio. And I got offered a job by 98 FM in Dublin, full-time as against part-time. And I went there and I... 10 very happy years there, and I went to TV3, where I ended up doing sports tonight, Champions League, and then Ireland AM for 19 years. It was great fun. And now I'm on Q102 to do the record show with the lovely Venetia Quick. That is amazing. And then I've actually got a question for you, and this is a question that I ask a lot of people, and I get very good answers. Okay. And this is to do actually with, what music did you grow up with as a child? Oh, well, glam rock was probably the big stuff when I was a young fella. Stuff like Wizard and uh, Mud and a whole heap of bands that would literally dress up in shiny gold, silver clothes and play. It wasn't really rock music, but it was pop music trying to be rock music, I suppose. And then David Bowie came along and then punk rock came along and then disco. So I absolutely love punk rock. And m- one of my favorite albums of all time is that Sex Pistols album, Never Mind the Bollocks. And that's just fabulous. Uh, into yeah. disco then into the early 80s and just played all the hits then across the 80s and 90s Wow, that's actually really interesting and I can see you've got a similar interest to me I love uh, punk and I yeah. love punk rock I love the likes of the Ramones I love the Stiff Little Fingers and like you were saying there, I love a bit of Sex Pistols too so that's really cool to know And then, Excellent. thank you Another question, actually, that I like to ask, uh, how did you actually get into radio? Um, I listened to a lot of radio. Um, I listened to BBC Radio 2 on a Saturday morning. There was a DJ called Ed Stupot Stewart. He used to do a programme aimed at a younger audience, of which I was one, obviously. Then I used to listen to the Top 40 on BBC Radio 1 in the afternoons because there wasn't any pop music radio in Ireland. You got a little bit of Larry Gogan once a week. There was no other stations. Yeah. So there was no choice. So then I used to listen to that. And then Pirate Station started in Dublin. And I was listening in at home, sick in bed one day. I was listening into Radio Dublin. And I rang them and asked them, could I come out and visit the station? And they said, no, no visitors. And then I rang another radio station called ARD, which was Alternative Radio Dublin. And they said, come down and have a look around if you like on Friday afternoon. So I did. And I met some of the people that I listened to on the radio station. They were my heroes. And then I got asked, would I like to come down and maybe answer the phones after school on Fridays? And I said, yep. And then I went from answering the phones to driving the desk, like you were doing in KFM. And only I wasn't opening the microphone for me. I was opening the microphone for Brendan O'Carroll and of Mrs. Brown's Boys fame and a man called Tony Reid, who was a journalist with the Evening Press. And they did a sports show on Friday nights and I used to just push the buttons. They'd mic one, mic two, put the phone calls through, all that sort of stuff. And from there, I went into being a DJ, and I absolutely loved it. As you know, 
Isn't it lovely yeah. to be able to open the it's microphone really and fun. tell it's, people? It's really, yeah, really share fun. your thoughts. Yeah, yeah that's is. that is so interesting and so inspiring for somebody like me to know that you went in one time and found in here, can I go in? And you ended up after a while becoming one of the crew. That is so interesting. And then part of your radio career, as you were saying there, when I asked you to tell us a little bit about yourself, you said that you um done a bit of uh, presenting the FIFA uh, world, the FIFA okay, Champions, League. It. Champions League. But, yeah, gone out of my head, sorry. That's okay. Um, no worries. Long day of school, you know. Um, <laughs> did you play sports growing up, actually? I did, I did, yeah. I did, played a lot of sports. I was never very good at any of them, but I played a lot. I played hurling for the school hurling team, but in college. I played football for a home farm football club. Only a B level now. I never got to A level. I boxed for Glass Nevin Boxing Club. I got bashed around the place, so I gave that up. <laughs> I wasn't too good at that either. But yeah, I played a lot of sports as, as a younger dude. But then when I started being involved in the pirate stations at around... 15, 16, 17. I hung around on my school holidays all day, every day, in the hope that somebody would either get sick or wouldn't turn up and they might say, hey, would you go on? And I was always available. Always. But I just loved it. That is actually so cool. And then I've actually got a question back again about radio. I'm jumping from a lot of subjects here. That's Sorry. okay. Um, no problem. What do you love most about radio? Just going in. I tell you, I, I worked in television for 19 years, something I never thought I'd do. And telly's great fun, but you're, you've no control. If something goes wrong, you just get a voice in your ear telling you, talk for 10 minutes or we're getting you a video of X, Y, Z, but you've got to keep going. Whereas on radio, because you have your desk and if something goes wrong, you normally know what it, you normally know what it is. It might be something sticking. It might be a fader down instead of up. So you can correct it. So that's one of the things I like is the control of the radio studio. But I also love the intimacy whereby you're in a nice warm studio, you can have the lights down really low, and you know there are people listening to what you're saying. And that's the privilege, being able to maybe talk about songs you like, being able to maybe do a request for somebody, but just connecting with people. I cannot agree more. That is the perfect description of what it feels like to Good, be on the radio. Yeah. And I feel that myself very much so. That really makes sense. And then... You were saying there, you were on TV, and you, as you were saying, you did some TV work. And may I ask, um, was this enjoyable for you? Did you enjoy working on TV? Yes, yeah, I have to say yes. Firstly, because I was working with a very good friend of mine, um, Mark Cagney, who I'd worked with on 98FM. We were both in the same radio station. So I got to work with him. He kind of was older than me, more experienced in television, and he gave me a lot of advice, a lot of help. And it was, it's a great job. You got to travel, you got to see things you might not normally see if you're working in a civil service job or if you're working at a whatever job. So yeah, I, I liked it, but radio's much more fun. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. And do you know what? You've actually answered my next question. How does TV compare to radio? And you uh, answer that in what do you enjoy about radio? And that question there, that is actually quite interesting. Because when I usually ask people, um, which you prefer radio or television, some of them would go television. And I kind of go, mm, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But me, myself, I've always thought to myself, if I was to pick from telly or radio, I'd go for the radio. And oh, then yeah. I've fun. got a bit of an out there question for you now. Okay. Um, so you're into sports. You were on the radio at 15. Yep. Were you ever a musician? Did you ever play no. any instruments? No, I'm tone deaf. I, I couldn't. <laughs> ne ne never tried. Plus, I'm one of these weird people that I'm right-handed. I write with my right hand. But if I play golf, which I, I don't do anymore, I have to play with my left arm as the lead arm. So I think learning to play guitar, I think Paul McCartney might be a left-handed guitar player, but I believe it's very difficult. So no, I never had an interest in it. At one point, I thought I might learn the banjo because I was loving the ballads. And uh, somebody said to me, oh, it's a very difficult instrument. And I just forgot, because I was always working in radio and television and just working. So I didn't really have the time to maybe chase up a music. But something I would have loved to have done. Do you play a musical instrument? Oh, I actually... Guitar, you see your guitars. One is my dad's bass. I think you put Excellent. that in there. The other one's my guitar, and I love guitar. Uh, I'm not particularly good at it. 
And I've told people that in past interviews. I've only been doing it a year. And then the guitar up there, I was given to when I was like five. And I was like, right. it was massive on my tiny, yeah. puny hands. So <laughs> I went case. to myself, yeah. here, mom, dad, after banging around with this thing, trying to make something, it's gotten really out of tune. The strings are going a bit funny on me. Right. Why can't we just hang it up? It'll look really nice. So that's what we did. <laughs> so it's a brilliant guitar, but it's a fixer-upper. And then oh, the okay. one down there is a fabulous guitar, and it's so fun to play. Excellent. Excellent. And then, um, apart from hosting your show on Q102 uh, 102 that you were saying there, have you got anything else coming up soon? No, no. Breakfast, breakfast radio now is the future for me. We're on every day between 7 and 10, Monday to Friday. And then at the weekends, maybe out, out with my wife for dinner and just relax. That's all. That's the way I chill. Brilliant. With a long so, road. Any listeners who are listening, please check out Aiden's show. It's brilliant. And then for my last question, now this is going to be okay. really interesting, so I can't wait for this. Have you got any band recommendations for younger listeners or people? Just anybody. What kind of bands have you heard and you went... That's a really good wow. question. That's a really good question. One of the bands I discovered was uh, The Eels. And uh, uh, they're pretty out there. And they can be pretty dark as well, but I enjoy them. So maybe have a little Google of The Eels and see what you think. Their lead singer had a really tough time, but I think he's through that now and he's in a really good place. Wow. And I, I've never heard of these guys. Are they very famous or are they kind of just in the back? They're kind of, they have a very big cult following. They're sort of um, weird in that you could go to the concert and he might not do his hit songs. He mightn't do everybody's favourite songs. Uh, like one, one, one concert that he came to Dublin to do, the band, the Eels, um, they read the biography in between songs but didn't talk to the audience. It was kind of strange. Wow. Weird, yeah. But, but like, have, a, have a little look and, and, and yeah. see what you think. To be honest, I've always liked... Weird kind of bands always out there, yeah. like like yeah. Primus, Osric Tentacles, Chumbawamba, oh, no. <laughs> exactly yeah. stuff. I like bands that are weird, but I really like bands that the names you can't pronounce. Okay, that's well. <laughs> that's when you know they're a good bands. That's the way forward. What happens with you now and Kildare FM, KFC, K Four, uh, oh, KFC's chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what what happens next? Well, I actually finished up on my last show yesterday. Right. And I really enjoyed it. And my producer, uh, who is Paul Power, who I interviewed, he was my producer for the first episode. Right. And then he was, uh, co me and him were co producers in the last three. Brilliant. Um, and Excellent. it was so fun, though, to do the show ah, with KFM. It was so fun. Well, I don't think that will be the last time we'll hear you on, on, on a radio station, whether it's that one or another one. But what I will okay. say is that it, it, it's, it is a great fun job. And if you're doing that and making a living from it, you're not really working because you do, you do something you love. Exactly. You, I you, went. You, you don't mind. People were always asking me and it drove me up and around the bend. Um, they went always, uh, are you getting paid? Are you getting paid? And I went, one, no. Because I'm under sixteen, and, and you're learning. I don't want to get paid. Yeah, yeah. I'm loving it. I should be paying them to be able to go <laughs> on to the show. Because like no, eleven years of age and having a radio show. Yeah, it's crazy. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And as I said to you, I suspect we'd hear you on the on the radio again soon, possibly on your school holidays. <laughs> but stick with it, and hopefully, like there can be setbacks, like in life, like in any job. But, I mean, just keep doing it because now you know you can do it and I think you're going to be very good at it. So you've got chances down the line to practice like KFM and other stations will come along too. And I've no doubt we'll hear you on some of the big stations in years to come. Thanks, Aidan. And may I ask, actually, as a final question, uh, a final, final question, um, but um, what is, one, one, name a highlight of your career. Oh, there's, Before we there's a good one. I suppose my very first show on what was called Legal Radio, which would have been Century Radio, which was a national station operating out of Dublin 
back in, oh, well before you were born in 1989. And my first show was Breakfast Show on a Saturday. And Terry Wogan, who was one of Ireland's greatest ever radio broadcasters who worked for the BBC, he left Ireland in the 60s and worked for BBC Radio 2 and worked for BBC Television. I handed over to him. So I was able to finish my show with saying, that's it for me, Aidan Cooney, until tomorrow morning at 7. Have a great Saturday. And then I was able to pause and say, and Terry Wogan is on next. And that was one of my great moments because he was a hero. That and a legend. is actually class. And I'd like to say to you, Aidan, thank you so much for joining me on this interview. It's been such a pleasure and so fun to talk to you. Thank you so much. Logan, thank you very much. Have a great weekend, sir. And thank you very much for giving me my very first Zoom interview and first Zoom call. <laughs> See you, Bye, mate. Aiden. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Logan Sounds Off. You can follow me on X, Facebook and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And don't forget to subscribe and not miss any more cool episodes. Bye, guys.